How many can say this morning that you are thankful for your salvation today? Go ahead and stand up with us. Let's sing this out this morning. The song says, thank you, Lord, for saving me. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Sing it again. Oh, hallelujah. Welcome to our baptism service here at Stedman PH Church. And let me tell you, I was a little relieved to walk in this morning and not see any plastic sheeting 
going up this aisle. Because the last time we had baptismal service here at this church, uh, that tarp got a little wet and it turned into a glorified slip and slide. And I thought better than to send my footage to America's Funniest Home Videos. But then I thought, well, I would tithe on the winnings. So if you are new or visiting with us this morning, if you're here just as a special guest of someone being baptized, let me introduce myself. I'm Madison, and I'm the Connections Director here at Stedman PH. And we would be so uh, appreciative of you filling out a Connect card. It's that white and orange card in the pew pocket in front of you. Just lets us know that you were here and gives us an opportunity to welcome you as our guest. You can bring that card out to the Connect table in the lobby after service, and I have a special gift for you. So we have a few things coming up soon as we get into the swing of uh, back to school and summer being over and all of those things. Next Sunday, August 28th, is a big back to school Sunday. And we're asking anyone with um, parents of kids who are still in school to have their children bring their backpacks to church. And we're gonna do a special prayer for the coming school year over those backpacks. And then on September 1st, the Thursday morning Bible study with our very own Mitchell Faircloth is gonna be back in full swing. And um, Young at Heart Senior Ministry. You guys were a little slow on that one. I was waiting for the applause because I know y'all love that so much. Um, and then the Young at Heart Senior Ministry is actually getting back in full swing as well. And they're having a uh, bingo luncheon that's going to be taking place on September 17th. Um, sign up for that will begin next week. Um, and beginning on Wednesday, September 7th, I'm actually going to be leading um, a women's book club and Bible study on Wednesday nights. And in order to um, share a little bit with you about that, I ask that you turn your eyes to the screen. best-selling author, Francine Rivers, the phenomenal book that sold over one million copies. Based on a true story from over 2,000 years ago, the biblical story of Hosea comes to life. Winner of the Platinum Book Award, Redeeming Love now celebrates its 20th anniversary, 20 years of impacting lives around the world. Liz Curtis Higgs says you cannot read this book and not be changed. Library Journal. There is not one false note in this wonderful novel. Angela Hunt. This may be the single most moving book you will read this year or in your lifetime. Amy Grant says, I was a changed person when I finished that book. Redeeming Love, now celebrating 20 amazing years. Read it for the first time or read it and remember for the way it changed you. Redeeming Love by Francine Rivers. So that video was just a great introduction to the book for any of you who have never read Redeeming Love before, but believe it or not, they've actually already passed their 30th anniversary of that book and have sold over 3 million copies um, since that a video was made. So our women's book club and Bible study is going to start on Wednesday, September 7th. Um, if you do not own a copy of the book, um, I can help purchase one for you for $15. You can sign up in the lobby today. We'll be taking sign up for the group for the next few weeks, and I would love to have all of you ladies. So again, thank you all so much for being here, and I hope you enjoy our service today and seeing all these wonderful people be baptized. Amen. Thank you all.
<clears throat> good morning. How is everybody? It is so good to see you today. Uh, we've worked real hard to bring all these new people who will be joining the church immediately following the service. No, just... <laughs> it is so good to have each of you here today. We want to welcome all of the family members of our candidates who are going to be baptized today. Uh, it is so good to see some of our own folks' faces back since I've uh, uh, been traveling so much this summer. And uh, I want to tell you thank you for all of you that were here last week to support Miss Daniel Maynard. I heard good reports. I've known her a long time. She's a great servant of God, has a heart for the Lord. Uh, God has just blessed. I, I enjoyed the excitement this morning as I heard everybody came in and it just thrilled my soul. I do want to say that today is a big honor of mine to be able to do this baptismal service. Uh, I'm very grateful that these candidates have allowed me to be a part of their life. Uh, some of them I don't get to see every Sunday because they're in children's church or, uh, or if they're in youth but uh, with our schedules. But I'm very honored to have this opportunity. I met with them this morning uh, before service. And uh, I want to share this with you as well as I told them. Uh, water baptism is one of the great uh, ceremonies that we have in the body of Christ. Some people kind of get mis uh, misunderstand sometimes that water baptism means that you're saved. I want to stress to all of us today, water baptism does not save us. Water baptism is only a sign of what God has done inwardly within us, and we share that outwardly with individuals. As I told them this morning, I said the most important thing is for you to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior and to make sure that you're ready when the Lord comes. And I want to share that with all of us today, is that the most important decision in your life is not water baptism. The most important decision in your life is knowing Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and accepting him as your Lord and letting him be the Savior of your heart and your life. And I pray that if you're here today and you do not know Christ, it is our prayer that before you leave, that in some way you will find and have a personal relationship with him and have the joy of knowing that Christ has forgiven you of your sins. It's a little bit different today. As you notice, there is a baptistry behind the screens up there. But I, uh, I just kind of made an executive decision. I, I, I did not want to do baptismal back there because I felt like you needed to be a part of it out here. Amen. 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 And so uh, we've already instructed our folks what they're going to be doing. Uh, for those of you who are worried about the floor getting wet, that's okay. That's why they make wet dry vacs. Amen. And uh, we have made every precaution. The only precaution is, is that I told Kennedy, I said, Kennedy, just do not pull me in. <laughs> I'm glad her daddy didn't hear that because he'd probably given her a way to do that. But before I start this morning, I would like to present our candidates with their certificates. Uh, I was thinking, how could I do this? I, <clears throat> I would love to do it up here, but the only problem, if I give it to them, it gets wet. I want to think Miss, uh, Miss Joyce, who has done a fabulous job, who uh, took care of getting their certificates done, you would have think we have gotten these from the best printer in the world. And we did. She took the time to make these and make them special, and I appreciate that. So when I call their name, I'm going to ask them to come and stand right here, and I want to present them with their baptismal certificate. Miss Chloe Bloomfield. Miss Chloe. Thank you. Thank you, Chloe. You are so precious. I told her a while ago, she said, oh, I forgot my towel. And then she got one. I said, well, all you need is a washcloth. You don't need it. As big as she is, she just, she's through. Mr. Michael Horn. <clears throat> uh, bless you, Mr. Michael. It's my privilege to present this to you, buddy. I'm thankful for what the Lord has done in your life. And man, God has done a great thing for you in the last few months, and, and we're very thankful for that. God bless you. Miss Kennedy Hancock, 
Miss Smiles, Miss Giggles, how are you, precious? Thank you for letting me have this special time in your life, and I'm honored to give you a certificate. But most important of all, I look forward to see what God is going to do in your life and use you for the kingdom of God. Amen. Miss Macy, Miss Macy, I'll not forget Sunday that she came out there. That was uh, July 4th weekend, if I remember correctly. And she came up to me and she said, Pastor Terry, I want to be baptized and I'd like for you to do it. She said, I got baptized at a young age, but I really didn't understand it fully. She says, but now I'm excited about it, and uh, I want to be rebaptized. and I want to tell you, God has been working in your life. A few Sundays ago, you don't realize this, but at the end of the service, I was preaching on praise and worship, and at the end of the service, you were sitting over here with Preston, and you stood up, and you started worshiping the Lord. You don't realize that you were a catalyst that mo mo Sunday morning for other people to respond to God. Miss Janelle, she said, I looked up and I saw Macy. She said, I couldn't take it anymore. And I want to tell you, God has special things for your life, and we're just going to miss you while you go off to school. But you're just required to come back every Sunday and make sure you're here so you don't miss anything. There you go, darling. God bless you. You are welcome. Ace. Mr. Ace, how you doing? Make me jealous with all that hair. <laughs> Let's see, you're seven, right? Ace, I am so honored this morning to be able to have a part of your life in baptizing you today. And also, Miss Emily's going to help me, your children's church director as well. I just pray that God will use you in a wonderful, wonderful way. I love your personality. You're a hoot. In fact, I believe we can make a shirt that says stinker right on the top of it. Can we not? Look at that face. But you know what? I just pray blessing over you and pray God will use you in a wonderful way as you grow up to serve the Lord. Amen. And his partner in crime, Mr. Avery. <clears throat> Where did you guys get all this hair? It's a shame. You ought to be embarrassed to walk up here with a bald-headed man like that. Avery, I'm very honored to baptize you today as well. And I tell you, thank you for letting me have a part of your life and do this. And I just pray God will bless you real good. God needs young men to grow up and serve him. And I pray that God will lead you and guide you. And I pray that God will use you for his kingdom and that you'll be able to win many souls for the Lord. Amen. God bless you, buddy. Mr. Jason. There he is. Jason, was, I was standing here beside me a while ago, and Jason was grinning. And I think I found out what he was smiling about. Pastor Kevin kept backing up to, that, to, the, to the baptistry back there. And I looked at him, I said, if he goes too far, he's going to fall in. <laughs> Jason, I haven't had the privilege to see you or know you as much as I do some of the others. But you know what? I'm proud of young men, young teenage men that are not ashamed to let people know that being a part of Christ is a very important part of growing up. And I know as you face the future that you're going to need the Lord to give you direction and give you guidance. And I pray that God will keep his hand upon you and that you will serve him and that you will let him be the Lord of your life and that you will find that God has great things in store for you as well. God bless you, Jason. Mr. Nathan, didn't Nathan make it? Nathan was coming. Nathan? All right. May I get that to you, please? And last but not least, Mr. Mickey Clevitus. It's taken me six months to learn how to say that last name. I always want to say Clevitus, but it's Clevitus. And <laughs> I want to tell you, I appreciate your involvement. I look back and I see how... You smile, and I see how you bring your family to church. And I'm going to tell you something, buddy. That's what more families need is fathers that will lead their children and their family to the house of the Lord. I pray great blessing over you, and I pray God will use you in a wonderful and powerful and great way. 
and that you will continue to grow in his grace and that God will allow you to see great things done through your life for him. Amen? Amen. 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 You're welcome. Can you give all these folks a great big round of applause? Amen. 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 Miss Lynn, if y'all want to play something softly while we're doing this, this is fine with me. Whatever you'd like to do. <clears throat> I have got to have my, my notes here. And uh, so I am going to, I, I want to tell you, I think it's very important for the pastor to do these types of things. But I want to tell you that it is not just my job to do this. So I'm going to ask our youth pastor, Josh, and uh, Rebecca, if y'all, if Rebecca, if you want to come, you're welcome to come as well. And our children's director, Miss Emily. Emily said, do I have to be up there the whole time? I knew she didn't want to, so I said, yes, you do. So if y'all will join me on that side right there. I want to tell you that, uh, I, I'm just going to tell you that uh, I'm thankful for what Miss Sarah and the staff is going to be doing for, for our senior adults. But I do want to tell you that still one of the greatest and most important ministries in this church are our children and our teenagers. I get tired of people saying, well, they're the church of tomorrow. Well, no, they're not. They're the church of today. In fact, we've got several of our teenage boys that are helping with ushering. If you go over to Children's Church, sometimes the kids are over there greeting people. Either that or Miss Emily just can't get them to stay in their class. I haven't figured that one out yet. But they are a very big part. Uh, I also want to thank her and the staff and everything they did for Vacation Bible School. I think you averaged about 70. We averaged about 70 kids a night. Uh, I need to make this announcement. I think I don't see Frank this way. There he is. I didn't know if Frank would be in the hospital today after all that dancing he did. I didn't know if he threw anything out of whack. And, uh, but I appreciate I watched the videos and I saw it and it thrilled my heart to see you folks supporting the kids and supporting these folks here. But today we get the opportunity to just bless these folks and for us to be able to baptize them this morning. And we have a slides of them. If they were sent in, we do have some slides that so you'll see them while they're up here. And we're going to start this morning with Miss Chloe. Miss Chloe, would you come? <clears throat> you stand right here. I'll hand it to you. There you go. No, it's not cold. That would have been good. You sit around right there. There you go. There you go. Chloe, it is with great honor and a privilege this morning as pastor of this church along with your youth pastor to present you this morning as a candidate for water baptism. And this morning we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 There you go. You can draw off just a little bit right there. Amen. This morning, Mr. Michael Horn. Oh, we'll do it, buddy. Yeah. Just step right in there. Come and you can sit down right there if you can. There you go. I've got to tell you something about this gentleman. It was after the three point basketball tournament. I was on my way home. Pastor Kevin called me. So, Brother Terry, Mr. Michael Horn wants to speak to us uh, tomorrow morning, Sunday morning. Well, I, still me trying to know everybody and learn everybody. He started putting the piece together. I said, Oh, okay, I'm with you now. And we met with him back in the old children's church uh, sanctuary back there. And Mr. Michael said that, he said, uh, he said, I can't do this alone anymore. He said, I, I've got to have the Lord. 
back there in that class, he gave his heart to the Lord. His wife didn't know he was going to do it. And I brought him up to the front, and he testified of God's saving grace that morning. And he has been serving the Lord now. It's how many months? been five months. He's been serving the Lord, testifying. And he has talked about how this has been the best time of his life, and things are going so much better. And Mr. Michael, not only was it my privilege to be able to, um, not that white one right there, yeah. Not only was it my privilege to Pastor Kevin to lead you to the Lord, but today it is my honor and my privilege to be a part of your life and to be able to baptize you today. And if you'll just get ready, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 I am glad you folks are clapping. I, I want this to be a celebration today, okay? Amen. Amen. All right. Miss Kennedy. Thank you. Come right around here, sweetheart. Just sit down right there, baby. Y'all doing okay so far? Isn't this exciting? Yeah. Miss Kennedy, I am so glad that I get to have a part of doing this along with your children's church director, Miss Emily. And today we are honored to be able to baptize you. Always serve the Lord. No matter what anybody else does, you serve the Lord because God will use you in a wonderful way. Are you ready? Kennedy, we baptize you today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 There we go. She has so many bracelets on, I thought she was going to float away. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Miss Macy. Macy's our ball player. Step all the way up. And just sit down right there, baby. Let's see, you leave for school when? I left Thursday. You left Thursday. Yes. And you're where? Barton. Barton College. Well, you're not too far from Greenville to be able to go to my son-in-law's church on Sunday when you're not here. That's the St. Paul's PH Church. Now, he's not as good as I am, but I, I'm working on him, okay? <laughs> I'm so proud of you. You don't know how it thrilled me when you told me what you did to ask me to do this. And I just pray God's going to use you at Barton. I pray God will help you to be an influence to folks with your smile. Remember I told you that day, you are sneaky too. <laughs> uh, yeah, but that's all right. And I'm so glad to have a part of this today along with your youth pastor. Today, Macy, we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 I have my notes here. Mr. Ace. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Come around around here, man. You're doing good. Step right on up here. <laughs> Just wave so I don't know if we've not drowned you. <laughs> can you sit on your knees? You want to sit on your knees? Try that. I think you're limber enough you can go back, okay? If you don't, I'll grab you by the hair and we'll pull you up, okay? <laughs> Oh, me. 
this, y'all, this is just fun. This, being in ministry, this is part of, of, of just enjoying what the Lord does. Mr. Ace, I pray blessing over you, buddy. And I pray God will use you in a wonderful and fabulous way and that you will always serve the Lord. Can you hold your nose like I showed you? There you go. Today, Miss Emily and I, we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. There you go, buddy. Good job. Good job. Good job. I tell you what, Ace, you want to do this, buddy? You want to just stand right here and wait for brother because mom and they may want to meet you in the back. That dude, they can stay, they can wait for you. How about that? Mr. Avery? Was that okay, mom? Well, I, or do you want them to go by herself? They're good to go by themselves? Oh, you wait? I have no idea what we're doing over here. <laughs> Wave, Averett, so they know you're in here, buddy. <laughs> Averett, I pray that God will continue to bless your life and use you for his glory and his honor and may great things happen for you as you serve him. Amen. Hold your nose. There you go. Miss Emily and I, we baptize you today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 There you go, buddy. Amen. Uh, let's see. Mr. Jason. Jason, I ask that the Lord will bless you and use you. And as you grow, are, are you headed to college? Not yet. You are what? Just working. You're just working. Cool. I hope you make a lot of money. Pay your tithe. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. I just pray God will give you direction in your life. And that as you look forward to see what God has for you, you'll be open and that you'll be mindful to hear what he has to say to you, and you'll follow him. And if you always follow him, you will always be blessed, and your life will be full. Today, Jason, it's my honor to be able to baptize you along with our youth pastor, Brother Josh. We baptize you today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Mr. Mickey Clevidence. Yep, she'll hold it for you. <laughs> she'll hold it for you. That's all right. He's not worried about it. That's right. It is going to be wet. There you go. You're going to have to slide up a little bit so we can get all you in there, buddy. Oh, there you go. I know. Mr. Mickey, thank you for what you do for the Lord. I appreciate you supporting your wife for the times that she has given for girls' ministry and served in other areas. But most of all, I thank you that you allow God to be a part of your life. And I pray that he will continue to bless you and watch over you and lead you and guide you and that your life will be fuller than it's ever been from this day forward. It's my privilege along with Pastor Josh for us to be able to baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Can we stand and give all of them and give the Lord a great big round of applause this morning? Hallelujah. 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 You've not had a chance really to greet anyone, so I 
Uh, they're getting trained. Oh, do what? Oh, and Children's Church is going out. Yes. And give our Children's Church a good. I appreciate them being in here this morning. That'll give our children time to get out. So while, uh, why don't you just turn and greet someone, and then after that, uh, Mr. Marcus is going to come and receive our morning offering. fantastic you know um there's a lot of bad stuff on the news matter of fact i've got some friends say they won't even watch the news it's depressing it's a lot of bad stuff but i tell you what when you got eight eight people this morning that says you know what i love the lord and i've got a relationship with him and i want to tell everybody else i got a relationship with him and you get publicly baptized as kenny chesney said that's the good stuff amen that's the good stuff so um if we could get the ushers to come forward we're going to take up the morning tithes and offering we appreciate you all being here today. Whether you're a visitor or a longtime member, we thank you so much. Your support is so important. Uh, your support and being here, volunteering your time, um, getting your kids to come to church with you, but also worshiping through your tithes and offering is so important. And that's what we're gonna do right now. So we're gonna pass the plate. Um, we've been doing this again uh, for quite some time. But also, uh, you're able to give online. For those that you're watching online, just go to our website. You can give there. And if for some reason we pass the plate, and later in the service you feel moved that you want to give a little bit more, we got touchless uh, boxes in the back that are still back there, too, that we check. So you can slide that in when you're leaving or what have you. But uh, let's uh, pray over the offering, if you would, please. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, Lord. What a beautiful day this is, God, where people come today to say, you know what? I love you, Lord, and I want everybody to know that I love you, and I want a deeper relationship with you. God, it's a great, great day, God, and we thank you for everybody that's here, every family that's represented. God, we thank you, Lord, and we ask that you bless them. God, and now as we take up the tithes and offering this morning, we ask that you bless it also. Lord, that it will go to your kingdom, Lord, that it will lift it up. It will make it a larger kingdom, Lord, and bring more people to you. Because, Lord, that's what we're here for, is to gather more people that will be able to go to heaven and be with you forever. God bless it. Help everyone here to have a great week. In Jesus' name, amen. Could you stand with us once again this morning? Let's sing together. Lord Jesus, there's no one else who we can trust in today like you. Let's sing this out. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just today, him and his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to go a same.
Let's sing it, oh, for grace. Oh, oh, grace to trust Him. Just one more time. Tell Him this morning. Oh, for grace to trust Him more. We love you this morning, Jesus. We praise you this morning. We know that there's no one else we can put our hope in besides you. You are the first to the last, the beginning and the end. You are our Savior, our Lord, and our soon coming King. Our Father everlasting, the all creating one, God. Jesus, our Savior. I believe. I believe in God, our Father. I believe in Christ, the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. I believe in Jesus. Oh, I believe. Oh, I believe in you, Jesus. He is our judge and our defender, suffered and crucified. Forgiveness is in you. Descended into darkness, you rose in glory.
believe in the saints' communion and in your holy church. I believe in the resurrection when Jesus comes again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. Do you believe this morning? Do you believe? Yes. Sing it out. resurrection and the resurrection power that you have in and through our lives and we rely on that today lord jesus knowing that you are coming back for us and we get to spend eternity with you lord jesus and we're thankful today for all of those who have joined us in that today through their baptism they will be with us to celebrate in your glory and we praise you for that today lord jesus we pray for pastor terry as he comes to bring your word pray that you would open our hearts and let his words penetrate through him, your words penetrate through him into our hearts today, Lord Jesus. We also pray for those who are hurting, who are sick. Pray for your comforting touch on those who need you, Lord Jesus. We know that you are the healer, you're Alpha and Omega, and we can call on you for any and every need, and that's what we do today. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you bless us as we go out this week, and let us be a light for you. Let us be a witness to all that we see in everything that we do. We praise you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated this morning. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Amen. God is so good. Thank you for being here. We're so glad to have family members that of our baptismal candidates are here today and and we're glad to see all of you that were willing to be here today to help celebrate and worship together the Lord is great and greatly to be praised he is worthy of all of our praise father we're just so thankful we thank you for your sweet spirit that we feel in this place this morning so thankful father that we can believe in a god that is alive so glad that we can worship and know that there is a savior who died for our sins we are so glad there is the holy spirit who comforts us we're so glad that you were born of that virgin mary and we're so glad that you died and that you rose the third day because without that all of this would be in vain that's why we can say there is no God like our God. There's no other religion, no other way that anyone can compare to who you are. You say in your word that you are a jealous God. It's not a jealous God that is sinful. It is just that because you are so holy and so great, you recognize even your own majesty. And Father, I ask you this morning that as we come into this place to magnify you, to worship you, to celebrate you, that all of us will allow you to have the place in our life that you want. 
the place in our life that we need, the place in our life that would help us to surrender and follow you so others can know you as Savior. Father, again, I thank you for these this morning who came and gave testimony by being water baptized. Thank you, Lord, for your presence that was here. And, and right now, Lord, when I was speaking to them, the thoughts that I could see or feel like I could see in their eyes, the sincerity of knowing that what they're doing is important, I thank you for that. Now, Lord, I pray that you would continue to bless this day, bless our coming in and our going out. Now, Lord, that when we leave this place today, we can say it has been good to have been in the house of the Lord. Oh, God, you know our needs. May your Holy Spirit this morning just move over this place for just a moment. May your presence permeate all of the junk, all of the hurts, all of the confusions, all of the aggravations that separate us sometimes from feeling who you are and who you want to be. There is power in the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. That he is Lord. Father, this morning we're so glad that we can confess in worship. You are Lord. Bring healing. Bring encouragement. Bring a renewal. Bring a satisfaction of knowing that you have not forgotten us. And we give you praise for it. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Thank God for his presence this morning. I do just want to make a couple announcements, if I may. I'd like to remind you that Mr. Tony uh, uh, wants us to be reminded of our commitment of our, um, our Go offering. And uh, our goal was $7,000. If you've not had a chance to give yet to that, uh, you can either give that privately or when you do give an offering for the global outreach, please make sure you mark that in your, uh, on your card or on your envelope or either on your, um, on your check. And uh, when you leave out today back at the, at the front door, there is some information for missions and we would like for you to go by and get that as well. Uh, parents, we, the children got some little coin purses back about two or three weeks ago and uh, if you will bring those next Sunday and have those kids to bring those next Sunday and by the way it not only holds coins it holds folding money <laughs> and if you don't want to weigh your pocketbook down ladies with everything else you have in there just slip a couple hundred dollar bills in there and it'll make your pocketbook a lot lighter <laughs> and it'll make it a lot easier and everybody said yeah, that was from the men. The women didn't say anything, I think. <laughs> I do want to mention one other thing. I'd like to challenge the men. Coming up January the 20th, uh, I'm sorry, let me come back down. Coming up September the 16th and 17th, there will be a Band of Brothers uh, men's conference at our headquarters there in Falcon. And Brother Lee Grady, uh, if you've never heard him, he is a fabulous man of God and a great speaker. And you can register there uh, online by going to ncipc.com. So I'd like to see as many men as you would go. You will be blessed by that. You'll be able to get to be able, uh, you'll be able to uh, enjoy some time with some other PH. Uh, brothers as well and build some relationships and some friendships and so I hope that you will remember that and that you will go uh, that weekend. I'm going to do something probably is going to shock most of you. Uh, I am not going to preach long this morning because I already know it's almost 11 o'clock. So normally in a special service like this 
I, I want the visitors to come back, so today I'm going to give them a short sermon, then I'll give them the long one when they come back. For those of you that are visiting today, let me just share with you, I am the interim pastor of the Terry Whittington. I've been here since February, and the church is in the process of uh, replacing the, uh, uh, fulfilling, not, uh, well, replacing me and filling the pulpit at the same time, and uh, so uh, please uh, make sure you come back and uh, that you be a part of us. We're glad to see you today. Now, if we can get this section and this section and this section like this section, we'll be doing good. <laughs> we got a good crowd right here. Yeah, I think I'm just lock the doors, guys. Don't let them out. Yeah. I want to finish today. And just briefly, and I, I do mean this briefly, uh, I want to go back and I'd like to finish up the thought of pick up the key of teamwork. Several years ago, I was watching a, uh, the news and there was a, a coach that was being interviewed. And the coach mentioned about how in the world are you going to have a winning season? What are you going to do and what changes are you going to make that will help this team be better than they were last year? Now, I will tell you that I am a Carolina fan, and I enjoy Carolina basketball, and most of you know it's getting ready to be football season, and everybody's being hyped up about that. Facebook was burned up Thursday night with the Cape Fear Colts who won their ball game, but they almost didn't win that ball game. How in the world do you go 16 to nothing and almost lose 16? I don't understand that. I, I hope the coach is not here. But anyway, and uh, so, so <laughs> uh, but anyway, thank God they won. But he made this comment. He said, what we need to do is that we need to get back to the basics. Now, I want you to know that I am a person that I like growth. I I'm a person that change really doesn't bother me. Uh, now, I'm not a person to change things just to change it. I think that as we look at church over the past few years, that we have felt like that the more changes we make, the better we'll get. When in reality, some of the changes that we make doesn't make us any better. It even makes us worse. Now, I'm pretty open about things. i I am, uh, in some way, I am not a legalist. Uh, there are some traditional things that I still like. Uh, I am not a traditionalist by trade or by, by ministry. I mean, you got to understand, I was the first preacher to wear makeup and go in churches and preach, okay? Now, for those of you who are visiting, like, what? <laughs> am I in the right church? That's because uh, I'm a clown, and uh, some people will call me other things. But anyway, um, I'll never forget that when I first started clowning, that it was kind of weird that folks would call the house and say, uh, it, uh, Miss Susan said, uh, they'd say, Susan's Terry there. I said, yeah, come speak to him. And she'd say, well, not right now. She said, he's putting on his makeup. <laughs> I'd really love to have seen the reaction on the other end of the phone. What? <laughs> it's kind of like the little girl in kids' camp meeting one night. She was a little scared of Whittle Do, and she had gone over and sat beside <laughs> Susan in fact, her, uh, her granddaddy was Brother King White, if you ever knew Pastor King White. And um, she was sitting over there. She wasn't quite sure what it'll do. And she snuggled up beside Susan. And when it was over, while they were sitting there, Susan was trying to calm her down. She got a little bit better. She looks over at Susan and she says, what does he look like naked? <laughs> has always got something going on. But what I, I, I want to tell you is that this coach mentioned about getting back to basics. I guess some of you that played football remember that you had to do a lot of running. You had to do a lot of exercise. You did wind splints. Uh, sprints, I'll get it right in a minute. Wind sprints. <laughs> I splinted when I ran. Anyway, did push-ups and jumping jacks. You had to go early. You stayed late. 
You had to do all those things. But I imagine that some of you will remember that the coach said, but in all of that, we're going to get back to the basics. You got to get back to learning how to handle the football. You got to remember that when you carry the football running, you just don't carry it in one arm. If you're running back, you cover it up. So if you get the tar knocked out of you, we don't care if you lose your head, don't lose the ball. You know that when you're on defense, you cannot grab, you use open hands and uh, you make sure that you don't grab uniforms, getting back to basics. And sometimes what irritates a coach the most is when the simplest of basic things in a sport or anything else they do not do and they're penalized for it. It's not really the big things, it's the little things. So this coach said, we got to get back to basics. I remember that used to, that in basketball, that especially with some of the teams, they were more finesse in the way they passed the ball. You passed with two hands. You caught it in the chest. You didn't do this behind the back and under the leg and over the shoulder kind of stuff. I mean, if you watch NBA ball now, it's just run down, do whatever you want to do. It's just no team effort whatsoever. And he said, if we're going to have a good season, we got to get back to the basics. May I tell you today that that is the very same philosophy that needs to be brought back into the body of Christ. Even though that we can still change, we can still adapt new ideas, we can still go and be progressive, we still got to remember that as a team, that if we're not involved in the basics of ministry We cannot be effective in the body of Christ. We cannot be effective in the community. We cannot be effective in our society. We cannot be effective everywhere we go at work or in our community or when we're with our children. And I believe that what I hear and what I I know I hear, and Joey, you'll probably notice this too, that what we, we hear now is that we're trying to do so much like everybody else, we have forgotten the basics of what has gotten us to where we are today. Now, I'll I'll be honest with you. I I like new things. I like trying new things. But I also have come to realize is that I cannot be, and you cannot be like everybody else. We have to find out what God wants to do through us and use the basic ideas as a team that we can accomplish the work of the Lord and families and souls will be brought into the family of God. It's getting back to the basics. Well, I want to tell you is that when you study the Word, you find out that's exactly what Jesus did. When you go back and you look at the teams, in fact, I started to call this uh, sermon the dynamic duo, and I just typed in dynamic duo in Google, and, and then I saw there was preachers that had preached sermons on dynamic duo, and I said, oh, I better not do that, because somebody will accuse me of getting this sermon off the internet, and I did not do that. But when you go and think about these teams, when you go back from Adam and Eve, as I mentioned to you earlier a couple of weeks ago, is that we find out that in their life that they, were, they had the basics. From the very beginning of time, one of the greatest basics they had is that they communicated with God. And my friend, I want to share with you today that the team in this church, if there's one thing that must be done, it is not only for the pastor to do the praying or a Monday night women's prayer or Tuesday night men's prayer, but it is imperative that every individual in this church learn to communicate with God because when you begin to communicate with God, God can use you on the team a lot better because God may begin to show you and envision in you things that can be done and how you can assist in the programs and the projects that God wants to do. You see, if we will all will commune with God, God will bring us to that place that we hear His voice, we know His voice, and we're not having to worry about the voice of the enemy. I don't know if you've ever read it or not, but I, 
I've preached this message. I've preached a message years ago on the five voices David heard. And if you go back and listen to David's life, there were five people who spoke into his life. His father spoke into his life. His brother spoke into his life. King Saul spoke into his life. Goliath spoke into his life. But the most important one that spoke into his life is that David spent time to hear the voice of God. And the reason that he did that is when he faced that giant and the giant made fun of him, he said, I do not come to you with a staff and I do not come to you in the name of my father or in the name of my brothers or in the name of Israel. He said, I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts and this day you're coming down. When the team begins to hear from God and the team begins to communicate with God, God can speak power into our life and you and I can overcome any attack of the enemy. For greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. I want to tell you one of the other bases we need to get down to is getting back to faith. Just trusting God. I'll hit this a little bit more in a next week or so about trusting God. But I, I, I want to tell you is that when you look at the Word of God and you see where Moses had Aaron, he had to have faith in God. He had to trust God. People will say, well, how do you know this book is true? I want to tell you the only way that you can believe and trust this word is that you have to have faith and a God that is alive, and a God that is great, and a God that is good, because when you put faith in God, and when God says it in this book, then you can know that it is real. Where is our faith this morning? It is very easy for us to put our faith in men. It's very easy for us to put our faith in our own abilities. It is easy to put our faith in our own talents or even in our own money, our wealth. It is easy for us to put our faith in our family or in folks that we have a high respect for. But my friend, even the greatest of men make mistakes. Even the greatest of men have gone broke. Even the greatest of men have missed ideas. Einstein messed up most of the time. But God is wanting us to get to the place that no matter what comes awry in our life is that we have faith in Him and to know that our faith in Him that God will never fail us and God will never leave us but God will always come through. Faith. Where's your faith this morning? But can I tell you this? There are some times we don't have faith. What? What? Oh, not me, preacher. I'm spiritual. I, if you believe you always have faith, you'll lie. Because there's times in your life you go through circumstances, your faith goes from here to down here. And one of the first things that you do is say, where is God? Well, if God really loved me, God take care of this. That is not faith. That is, oh, God help me. What am I going to do? Now, I know you spiritual people have never been that place before in your life. None of you have ever had to do that like I have. But see, our faith is important. How do I know that? Go back and read in the New Testament about the man that was paralyzed. He was on his bed and he could not get off of it. But four people took him, went to the house where Jesus was, and by all accounts, the house was packed within and without. That would be a wonderful thing. That we'd have so many people at church one Sunday, we'd have to take the windows out so everybody standing outside could see. But I know what you'd say. Yeah, but what we'll do about air conditioning? We'll do it in the winter. <laughs> it 
And when they got there, they were packed up around the, the house. They couldn't get in the door. They couldn't get in the windows. They couldn't find a way. So what did they do? Evidently, they found a ladder. And they climbed up on the roof, and they brought the paralyzed man up on the roof with them. Now, I don't know about you. I love you folks, but there's not a one of you men around here that I'm going to trust to take me to the roof of this church. <laughs> I love you, and I know you love me, and you look after me, but I just, uh-uh. Not when you've had one that's been wanting to put a shock collar on you for six months. I know I'm letting him take me to the roof. Can you imagine this? He's laying on his bed. He can't get up. And they say, hey, guys, let's take you to the roof. What? We're going to take you to the roof. No, man, I can't walk. What are you going to do, break the rest of my body? No, man, don't worry about it. We got this covered. Oh, man, I can't even get up. Oh, what am I going to do? I can imagine. I'm sorry. I'm just, a little, I'm just a little natural here. I can't help but believe somewhere in that discussion that guy says, have you guys lost your stinking mind? They take him up on the roof. And when they get up to the roof, they open the roof up. Now, that didn't make the building committee very happy. And then they dropped him down into the presence of Jesus. I love the story because it says, and Jesus, basically, when he saw them, he saw their faith. Catch this. He saw their faith. Not the man that was paralyzed. He was probably still trying to get out of there. I mean, I would be. Can you imagine? You're paralyzed. You got four guys that you really don't know, and they're lowering you down through the roof. I can imagine if that was my brothers, they were going to say, this is fun. <laughs> but the Bible says is that when Jesus saw their faith, he spoke healing into that man. My friend, I want you to know that we need to get back to the place with teamwork that we have faith for one another. Not just our own situation. Not just our own hurts. Not just our own desires. Not just our own concerns. Not just our own mistakes that go on in our life. But we need to begin to have faith for one another because we got church folks that when they go through difficulties and they don't have the faith they need somebody on the team to rise up and say I will step in the gap for them and God see my faith for them that God you will bring healing into their life I've got to tell you I got a gentleman this morning I've told you about him he's one of them gentlemen that I ate with in the morning and, and, and I, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail but He's one that uh, I've been had an opportunity to pray with a little bit, and I saw him last Monday. Did not know, but the week before, come to find out that he's been having a hard time breathing. He's a heart patient. He's been going to a heart doctor, and they've been treating his heart, but he's been having a hard time breathing. And he had a other situation that took him to the emergency room. They got him there, and he was just having a hard time breathing. And so they decided to do a body scan. And when they did a body scan, they found a tumor that was nine millimeters at the bottom of his lungs. He went Friday to have a biopsy. I, I really don't know, haven't heard what the result is yet. But I know there's two or three of us guys that the thing that we said is we need to pray for him. In other words, we need to stand in the gap for him. It is nice that you get a visit when you can from a pastor or from the prayer team. But I tell you what is even greater is that when you're going through difficulties in your life and just out of the blue your phone rings and on the other end somebody says hello and you say, hey, how are you doing, Linda? This is Terry. I just want to let you know. I don't know what's going on. May not be anything going on, but I just want to let you know. God put you on my heart today, and I've just been praying for you. And I just want you to know I love you. And if I can do anything for you, let me know. 
And you don't have to know the whole story. You don't have to know every little secret. But the thing is, is that God is wanting to use our faith to bring healing, our faith to bring hope, our faith to bring encouragement, our faith to restore the body of Christ so that God can do a great and wonderful thing in our life. Get back to basics. Get back to basics. I'm going to hit this one and I'm going to tell you, we need to get back to basics of giving our offering. I've been here six months. I've likely touched on giving. But I want to tell you, my friend, you cannot outgive God. I, I'm going to tell you this, and I believe this with all my heart. And you'll have to prove me wrong. Gas prices have gone up, food's gone up, bread's gone up, hamburgers gone up. I think I'm going to have to start being a cow and eat grass. <laughs> Medicine's gone up, doctor visits gone up. But can I tell you something? I believe what this word says that you cannot outgive God. Can I tell you this morning? That there's some of you that probably have not tithed faithfully and sometime. And sometimes we do that because we get mad of what goes on in the church. And I want to tell you, I was pastoring a church one time and a man got mad with me. And he took his tithe and he started putting it in the building fund. Nothing wrong with helping the building fund. But that ought to be an offering, not your tithe. <clears throat> Amen, Pastor. That's good. Whew. It's amazing how quiet you folks get when you mention money. And I'd heard that and heard that and heard that because he thought by not giving his money he was hurting me. But in reality what he was doing was hurting himself. Hello? If you get mad with the preacher and hold your tithe, you're not hurting me. You're only causing a curse in your own life. That's why I went back while Mitchell was gone three months. He's finally caught up his tithe. He's okay now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I figured you better laugh over this one because if you don't, you can get in a whole lot of trouble taking your own money. But here's, here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying. I'd heard that, and finally one Sunday morning I'd heard it and heard it, and I went to him and I told him, I said, Church, I'm going to tell you something. If you hold your money because you get mad with me, it's only hurting yourself. I said, but I'm going to tell you something. You just remember this. God doesn't need your stinking money. He owns a cattle on a thousand hills. Before every one dime was ever made or created by the government or any other nation, our God owned it all anyway. And I want to tell you, God still owns it all. It's just that God wants you to help become ownership of what he has for you. And if you will give with an open heart and a loving heart and a cheerful heart, I guarantee you it won't matter if gas goes to $5 a gallon and hamburger goes to $10 a pound. God will take care of you because the God that I serve is my Father. And he said I never have to go out begging for bread. He will supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. And I challenge you to outgive God. And I guarantee you if you try it, you will never look back. You know why? Because God loves a cheerful giver. That's all I'm going to say. I say that's enough. I'm not one that goes down the book and says, no tithe, no tithe, no tithe. Mm, that one's questionable. But isn't it amazing that you put your money in what you love. Now, I, I think next to giving you tithe, it's okay to take tithe and give to your grandchildren. I think that's in the Bible somewhere.
We need to get back to giving. But let me tell you something. I don't pray this prayer. I quit praying this prayer years ago. God, bless those that can give and those that can't give. Uh-uh. When I look out in this congregation this morning, there's not a person in this church this morning, if you can't give a full tithe, but you can give something to the Lord. Remember the one, the lady with the, the might? She gave what she had. God knows your heart. You see, if somebody gives and only gives five, and they give that with the full love of God, and that's all they got to give, God may bless them far more than the one who gives $10,000, who the only reason he does it is because it is for self-edification. Now, if you want to give $10,000, it's okay. You go right ahead and do it. If it'll make you feel good, it'll make me feel real good. But can I tell you something else about giving to God our basics? It's not just giving God our money, but giving God our energy, our time. Now, senior saints, I, I want to say something to you. Don't you get mad at me. You know I love you. Because you're the ones who fix me pies and cakes. <laughs> what was it? You do not bite the hand that feeds you. <laughs> of course, lately I think I need to bite because you ain't been bringing nothing lately. But I just want to let you know that. <laughs> I think what it is, when they found out I was in the hospital with my sugar went up, I think they said, oh, thank God I don't have to do that no more. Uh-uh, you splendor. Anyway. <laughs> Lost my train of thought. That wasn't even spiritual. I just thought it sounded good. Anyway, but senior saints, don't you ever get the idea that your time's over? Because there's a child, a young mother, a dad, a family that needs your wisdom, needs your love. Now, I'm, I'm, I, I'm not trying to pin them, any roses on, on these folks. But I love coming in and seeing these two people right here. Amen. I remember when back when they were a little healthier and back when there's not quite as much gray as there is now, I used to stand at that door right over there. And let me tell you something. When you walked in, you were loved. But guess what? Mr. Leonard and his wife now are not able to cook meals. and Maybe they're not able to get out there and pull weeds or teach a class. But let me tell you something they do every Sunday morning when they come in this church. If you walk by them, they're going to love you. He don't know I know this, but back when we had our, our uh, fireworks Sunday, somebody told me that he made this statement. Now, if it's wrong, they told it, so I'm just repeating it. So I'm not going to go to hell for lying. If they saw it, they're the ones that lied about it, not me. <laughs> that was the Sunday everybody wore their T-shirts, and everybody came in, and we were happy. It was just a great day. And somebody said, Mr. Leonard stood back there and said, isn't this great? He said, listen, all this excitement. He said, I haven't heard this kind of excitement in this church in a long time. And when I was told that from an older member of this church who has been here for probably 60 years, 50 years, it didn't matter what anybody else said that day because of what he spoke blessed my heart to know that somebody was blessed that day. God not only wants your money, he wants your time. And I won't be the first to tell you that I like going to church, but no, I don't believe you need to have something every night of the week to be close to God. But I do tell you this, is that when you can, you need to give time for the Lord.
Last thing I'll mention this quickly, and I'll, I'm going to go on because I, I know that I probably preached longer. Oh, I did. No, I didn't. It's not quarter to 12. I still got 18 minutes. Um, <laughs> we got to get back to loving people. Amen. I'm not perfect. I have faults and failures. If you don't believe me, ask that woman sitting right back there. She'll be glad today. But if there's one thing I have tried to do in my life, and even in ministry, is I try to love people. The church has been so focused on numbers and all the new gadgetry. And look, I'm I'm not against those things. Don't don't get me wrong. But if we had everything spot on and everything was just right and everything was perfect and there was no love, you don't have nothing. I love it. I'm going to brag because I can. Little Tinley. (laughs) Little Tinley came in this morning. I said, can I have a hug? She gave me a hug. (laughs) Taylor said, she don't want to do that, Pastor Kevin. Pastor Kevin said, hey, Tinley. And she went. Can I tell you that loving people is not easy? But can I tell you that if you love people, it's rewarding? I love hugging and smiling and fun. But I can stand here and browbeat and preach the Word of God. But if I don't love you, all of that is for nothing. We need to get back to just loving people. Our world is in a hatred situation. And we just need as the church to start making a difference and start loving people. I know. There's some people that you can't love. They won't let you. But you know what? Whereas there are some that won't, there's a whole bunch of others that will. If you'll just love them. Pastor Kevin, would y'all come, please? Get back to the basics. I got to share this, and I'm going to close for the third time. When I mentioned Moses and Aaron back, Sunday was a couple weeks ago, about Aaron. If you remember this, Aaron, Aaron was priest. God used Aaron to help be the spokesperson for Moses because Moses was slow to speak. Some people think that he had a speech impediment. I mentioned that. But what really got me was this. Is that when you look at the life of Aaron, him being a priest in authority, he never allowed his priestly authority to make him better than Moses he was Moses' helpmate oh well I'm just going to say it the problem we have in the body of Christ is too many people want to be in charge There's some folks that they won't do anything unless they have autonomy of authority. Well, they're going to do like I say do. And that stuck with me because I want to tell you, Stedman Church, 
This ministry is important. I brought up on this stage two weeks ago all the ministries that I, I could remember and make sure I hopefully I didn't miss anybody. And I, I walked by and I told you, men's ministry doesn't cast vision. Women's ministry doesn't cast vision. Prayer, women's prayer. I went through the line. I said, they don't cast vision. But here's what you got to understand. And i got to tell you this because this is important. No ministry that was represented on this stage is more important than any other ministry. Do, do you get that? Well, well, and, and, and I'm, I'm going to use this. I, I, I think I can use this. I, I'm going to just say men's ministry. Men, men, hey, I tell you what, church can't operate without the men around here. Well, let me tell you something, men. If it won't for your wives, you couldn't do anything anyway because most of you don't get anything done unless you go get your wife to help you do it. So that's, that is a mute thing. Prayer ministry. I believe in prayer ministry. But I want to tell the women prayer and the men prayer, your prayer time is not any more important than what they're doing over yonder in that children's church. Are, are you following me here? As a team, it is not my ministry. It's his ministry. Our togetherness brings glory to him and we all find our place and realize. And see, some folks in the church get so angry. Well, they didn't call us out. Well, they didn't mention us when we did all this work. Well, guess what? Nobody calls out all the, all the safety guys when they're here at 9 o'clock and walk by and check all the doors. And sometimes they miss service just to make sure this this preacher and you are safe and what I'm telling you this morning is this is that every one of us need to realize it's not who we are and what we do it is who he is and what we do for him as a team and that God receives the glory whether you get your name mentioned or not it's important Can you hear Aaron say, hey, Lord, uh, I'm a priest. I'm not helping Moses. He's a stutterer. I'm not, not going to be around him. But he submitted to his leader in order for God to use him to bring great things for the nation of Israel. The end. Amen. Find a place. Find a place. Be a part of the team. And let God use you for his glory, for the winning of souls to the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. Would you stand with me? That's all I'll say on teamwork. Unless the Lord directs me to do a little differently. But... We're getting close to the end of this journey. Father God, this morning, we are so thankful again for all that you have done and your blessings. As we stand here this morning in the solitude of this place, help us as team members to get back to the basics of what is important. Help us to know that on the top of that list, and I failed to mention, is the Word of God. Allowing the Word of God to permeate our lives. To train us, to teach us, to guide us, to mold us. Father, this morning as this church goes forward, I pray, Father God, that you would allow every team in this church, uh, no matter what they do, no matter how minute it may be or how detailed it may be, I pray that you will not allow it to become a big I and a little you. And it's all about me and not about anybody else. But let us realize that our service is about souls. And it's about the kingdom. And it's about encouraging. It's about loving. It's about pronouncing hope. It's about living a lifestyle that when folks see us, 
They will know we are his disciples because we love one another and we are a part of the team. And Lord, we are glad to be a part of it. I thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for our visitors. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your love. Thank you for just being God. I hate to ask you to do this, but this morning, can we just take a moment, lift our hands to him and worship him and just thank him. Say, Lord, thank you for letting me be a part of the team. Thank you, Lord, for letting me be a part of the team. Thank you for letting me be a part of the team. And let me do my part for you to receive the glory and the praise and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen.